So you made a good all the way to 1.5 this big. We are going to review about the trick functions today. And let's look at what are the six of the trick functions we present. So if you look at the all those six functions, sine function of the input t as an angle, that will give me the value of i over r. So don't forget that sine represents the y coordinate divided by radius. Cosine is x over r and tangent is y over x. It's going to be eventually become a slope again. And secant is going to be reciprocal of a sine function. And next one is this way, x over r. So let's review our example one by finding amplitude period and vertical shift of the functions. So first one, when I look at here, this indicates amplitude, and then that will tell me the period after we calculate. In this case, there is an automatic plus zero that I can see the vertical shift is zero. Amplitude three, and then how do we find the period? If you remember, period has a formula two pi divided by number in front of the x, so I'm dividing by two, which gives me negative pi, which is the same as my period pi. If you have a period negative pi, that will be the same as pi in this case. Now your turn. I want you to pause the video and try the in-class activity quickly. I will write the answer right away. My amplitude is 1 and period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1 over 2 gives me 4 pi. So it's basically stretched by 2 and vertical shift is negative 2. I hope that you got the same answer. So let's continue to example two. Now I want you to look at the three examples of the graph and then let's try to find sinusoidal functions. So when I look at this one, this one looks like a sine. This one looks like a cosine function with negative. And then last one, you can use either one, but I feel like it may be easier using sine. So I'm going to use that. Now let's compute the amplitude. If you look at this one, my amplitude is going to be three. And in this case, my amplitude is 2 and then upside down. And now I want to guess amplitude, as you see, it's going to be 3. So, so far, I'm pretty sure it's not too bad. But now, let's look at the period. So if I look at the period, you see that my function is repeating after 12 pi, which means my original function of the sine has a 2 pi as a period. But now I see that it's a 6 pi that is stretched 6 times stretch six times then how are we going to write six times of the sine function we can write it as one over six times x and i don't see any vertical shift so this should be the answer next one now when you see my period is going to be repeating every four uh oh so the formula says i have a two pi divided by the number front of the x we call as a d has to be four this is a um, period formula, 2 pi divided by b value in front of the x. So now I need to solve for b. So let's do cross multiply. For b is a 2 pi, that b is equal to pi over 2. So I can rewrite this one as b value pi over 2x. I guess a t, since I see t here. And the last one should be t. And then the last one, I see it. My graph started from the pi and then ended at 13 pi. Uh-oh, I see that my period is 12 pi, which is actually the same as this one. Then I want you to guess what should be the value in here one more time. In order to get 12 pi, the formula says 12, 2 pi over the b value has to be 12 pi. So let's try to do math here by cross multiplication. I'm going to get 2 pi is equal to 12 pi b, which gives me b value as a 6. So I can rewrite the value here as a 6 over 1. <laughs> then it will be stretching by 6 times. So instead of a 2 pi times by 6 makes a 12 pi. Sorry about my mistake. So my equation is going to be 3 sine 1 over 6x. However, I see that it shifted to the right pi amount and this one you have to be very careful you have to be very careful so i have 
3 sine 1 over 6 x and then you would think that we're gonna write as move right to the pi but this is not the right answer this case we have to be writing carefully 1 over 6 has to be outside of the parentheses and the x minus pi so which means i'm making my graph change into move pi amount and after that i'm stretching it to six times so i want to see the differences if you see this one this one the inside the parentheses are different if you distribute this case that's going to be 1 over 6 x minus 1 over 6 pi which is definitely different from this one that you cannot have this one as an answer so please be careful your c and your answer you have to put parentheses isolate by x minus pi here so right below the example two there is a in class activities that you can practice with two questions so please try and then let's compare the answer with you So let's compare the answer for the in-class activities and this is the answer I have from the, this graph which was a sine calculus of a negative and the next one is a cosine graph with a um, b value 2 pi of x. So now we are on main dish of the example 3 which let's review the inverse function of a sine, cosine and then tangent function. So as you know the inverse function of the sine function will be arc sine which we can write as arc sine x or sine inverse x same meaning and then cosine inverse function will be y is equal to arc cosine x or cosine inverse x and then tangent same way arc tangent x which is the same as tangent inverse x that's what we're gonna write it so let's look at the graph of a sine function sine function is going to have given five points and then they are going to be restricted the domain within one two negative one so just to be careful your graph never is going to be bigger than one or less than negative one then when you look at this one i want to find the inverse function inverse function has to meet with my horizontal line test however when I'm taking horizontal line test, there are multiple answers that we cannot find inverse. So by restricting our in domain and range, we can actually find the inverse in here. As you see my red windows in here, by restricting this one, it will pass the horizontal line test. So in this case, the graph of a sine function, the domain is going to be restricted between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and then that time your range is going to be negative 1 to 1 will give me inverse function so by switching x and y i can graph in here and as i know that by inverse function feature range becomes the domain of inverse so now i'm going to have my new domain negative 1 to 1 which is negative 1 to 1 in here and then new range is going to be negative pi over 2 comma pi over 2 which is 3.14 divided by 2 gives about i like to use 1.6 instead of 1.5 so i'm going to graph here about 1.6 and 1.6 and my graph of the inverse will be lying inside of this rectangle here and careful we know that this coordinate is a pi over 2 comma 1 so inverse will give me 1 comma pi over 2 which is 1 comma about 1.6 in here 0 comma 0 is right here and then the third coordinate will be in this case if you carefully plot this graph my graph will be in a shape of this way so that is my inverse function graph of arc sine if you understand the sine function of the inverse, I want you to pause the video one more time and try exactly the same way for the cosine function. I will also explain to you so that you get to see here if you don't want to pause it. So I will continue. If you want to do cosine function, I know that my cosine function will be graph shape looks like this way. And in order to have an inverse, we should take a horizontal line test. Whenever I'm taking horizontal line test, as you see, it indicates that I'm not going to have an inverse. So I need to restrict my 
domain and range so that I can have inverse function. In this case, I want to make only one intersection of the horizontal line, then that will make uh, this window here. So let's look at the careful what the domain is. My domain will be 0 to pi in cosine function and the range will be same as here, negative 1 to 1. So inverse function of the cosine, which is r cosine, the domain will be lying between negative 1 to 1. However, range will be 0 to pi. So let's try to see that what will be my rectangle here, domain negative 1 to 1 and 0 to pi as we know 3.14. So my rectangle is going to be restricted in this size in here. So when you graph the inverse function of this one, we are going to use these three coordinates and then be careful, this one shows that 0, 1, that will have 1, 0 in here. So 1, 0 is in this case. Next coordinate, I have the pi over 2, 0. Pi over 2 is about 1.6. So next coordinate will be 0, pi over 2. So 0, pi over 2 is about, I say 1.6. I don't want to call it 1.5. Then next coordinate will be third one pi over two comma zero will be zero comma pi over two. Oh, which we already did. Then last one I forgot. Indicates a pi comma negative one that will give me one comma negative one comma pi. So negative one comma pi is one point one four. And then carefully graphing this one, you will get to see that your graph shape will be. I get to see that this function is going to be look like this way and it's not really easy to see that shape so just to try to see from here when you fold the paper over y is equal to x if you can reflect this part to the opposite side so if you finish the cosine function now let's talk about the inverse function of the tangent function tangent function is going to have inverse as r tangent x and tangent function has a graph between negative pi over 2, pi over 2. The period is going to be pi passing through given three points. And this coordinate is pi over 4, 1. And then this coordinate is negative 4, pi over 1, or pi over 4 over 1. And the graph will look this way. So as we mentioned about above graphs, this will pass the horizontal line test everywhere, which means you can actually don't have a restriction for the graph. So let's put this one as a domain. And I see that domain is going to be negative pi over two to pi over two. And then range is going to be, as you see, all real numbers. They are continuing up and down. So let's put in our domain and range of inverse function that shows that domain is all real numbers and range is pi over two to pi over two. Pi over 2 is about 1.6 negative, so I'm going to make a restriction. My graph is going to be lying between 1.6 and 1.6 here. And 0, 0, is going to be definitely 0, 0. Careful, it's going to be pi over 4, 1 is going to be 1, pi over 4. Pi is 3.14. Pi over 2, we put it 1.6. So pi over 4 is, I know it's going to be a little bit less than 0.8. So we can put it as 1, 0.8 about here. And then other coordinate will be negative 1, 504. Sorry, I made a mistake again here. So my tangent inverse graph will look like this way. So now we are going to talk about the third question of a 1.5. When we can apply the trig function, this will give you some good examples. So one of the examples you can think about trig function when we use is going to be wireless internet, Wi-Fi, and anything that your cell phone, and computers, and TVs, and nowadays we actually get everything disconnected with wires. So all of those things, how they transfer, it is going to be look like a sine or cosine function, which we call as a sinusoidal function. And example four will show the, the function of the shape of the tide when it's in and out as a high and low. We will show that how will be look like as a sinusoidal function. So let's read the question. June first, high tide in Pacifica was at midnight. The water level at high tide was 10 feet. Later at low tide was a negative 2 feet. 
Assuming next day high tide is at exactly 12 noon, at that the height of the water is given by sine or cosine curve. So from here, I get to see that the highest high happened at midnight, which we can call the zeroth hour. And then from here, the lowest tide is going to happen at negative 2. And then there is the next high tide is going to be exactly at noon again. So from here, my function is going to be look like this way. If you actually draw twice, it would be better. Do you know why? Because I want you to see that how many ties do we have per day? Zero, one, two, three, how many? Actually, there are two ties. I want you to actually observe the ocean. I'm surprised sometimes we forget. We have an ocean right next to us. So it comes in twice a day and then it goes out twice a day and it influenced by the moon. I believe. So within 24 hours, my graph is not perfect from my angle, but 24 hours is going to happen twice. One time happened at noon, which is 12, and then next one is going to be another midnight. Then as you can guess, this is going to be 6 because your low tide will be the half of the number. So from here, I can see one by one. Can I find amplitude? In order to find the amplitude, you need to see the highest point to smallest point, and there is going to have a midline. We call the length of this is going to be amplitude. So we are not talking about the full length, half the length. So first, full length is, you see the 12, 10 plus 2, so 12, or 10 minus negative 2 as the difference is. Then half will be 6, so I get amplitude 6. The next thing I need to find is going to be period. So period, how often it repeats again? I see the high tide repeats in 12 hours. So here is a 12 hours. Then I need to find my B value, which is a 2 pi over the B value is going to be 12 hours. If you do cross multiplication, multiplication quickly, you will see pi over 6 as your B value. Now let's see if we make any shifting. Oh. I didn't even choose what function I want to use. I actually want to use, we could use sine, we could use a cosine, but this one will look better with cosine. So I'm going to use a cosine function. So I'm almost there. Cosine and six as an amplitude. Period is going to be pi over six. And I want to see any phase shift have made, and that's actually nothing. So I can just write as a x or t. And then how much is shift up? Because this is a 10, but this is a 6, so this difference will be 4, so my midline is shifted up, 4 to up, so I can write my function this way. That's the function for this case. However, however, actual tide is not exactly 12 hours. If you see exactly 12 hours, I don't know, is that season not happening or something? The tide's not gonna be happening. Anyway, so tide is not exactly, we can watch YouTube probably see what happened if it's exactly 12 hours of tide. Then 12 hours and 24 minutes, so we need to rewrite that. 24 minutes is a 24 over 60, don't forget. Then that is actually reduced as 12, and then 60 goes into here 10 times, then 6 goes in here 4 times, and then which is a 12 and 0.4. So we can see this one, we can rewrite our period. So 2 pi over b is equal to 12.04 this time. That will make my b value slightly different. So let's punch into the calculator after cross multiply. I get 2 pi divided by 12.04. Point five two one eight five nine. Then I'm curious, what is a pi over six? Pi over six is point five two three five nine. So this is going to be slightly less. Just look at even third decimal places. But as you see, it makes a huge difference eventually. Although it's only a few minutes. Now I want to try in class activities. And what happens if tide is 
happen at 3 a.m. instead of at noon. So that means I want to think about it. So since my high tide is going to happen at 3 o'clock instead of 12 o'clock, it's shifted to the 3 to the right. I can replace x as x minus 3. And this will be the answer. Or if you use this number, that will be actual their sinusoidal function. Of course, it's not going to be perfect because your waves are sometimes low and high. It changes like this way. However, you get to figure out what the period number is. Good job. Okay, so now let's talk about second to third part of the 1.53 function. I actually this part on your homework. So I actually thought it would be nice to review one more time here. So just think about intuitively. Intuitively, I saw the question here with 600 revolution per minute. What does that mean? 600 times it's going to rotate it per minute. So what would that be in second? That means I need to divide by 60 because of 60 seconds is one minute. Then that makes 10 revolution per second. Then they want to change to radian. So now it is going to rotate 10 revolutions per second. What does that mean? That means it's going to be 10 times the distance of the whole circle is going to be 2 pi each. So the radian as a distance will turn out to be 62.8 radian per second. So if you have the unit, and then that's going to be 62 times it's going to go of your radian per second. That's what it means. That's actually pretty far. And you're gonna have this much as a radius. Then per second it can go 20, 62.8 times further. Yeah, so that's what it means. So now let's look at another number with a little bit messier number. So if it is 200 revolution per minute, that means how much will be per second divided by 60 gives me 3.33 revolution per second. That means it's going to rotate it three times and one third. A second. So I want to find what will be the distance when you open that three and one third revolution. Then that times two pi is going to be oh, I made a mistake. It's going to be twenty point nine four three. Okay, so if it's 3.333 times 2 pi radians per second, that makes 20.943. So what this means, this wheel is going to rotate 200 times per minute. Then, now think about the distance. Your wheel is the, let's say that your radius is 1. Then, how much it's going to go is going to be 20.943 feet per second is how much it travels yeah so i want to think about what that radian means so that much if your radius is one which is a two as whole radian and a whole diameter yes so now there's a, in class activities i want you to pause the video and then try to see if you get the same answer as me okay so check the answers when it has a 1200 revolution per minute then there is an answer, please check. And then that makes 125.66 radians per second. And next one is going to be 418 times 0.879. So I have a question. I have a one, two, three, four. Which one is close to your tire? Which one is close to your tire? So your tire will make how much revolution per minute? Anybody? Okay, the answer is this one. If you don't trust me, I actually checked it Google quickly. So let me flip it over for you. There's 
just uh, type it higher average revolution and then here it shows that it's going to be oh i didn't even know my guess was right so here it said the diameter is a two feet then it's gonna be 840 revolution per mile so i was like damn it's a revolution per mile i wanna have a revolution per minute but you can think of actually one mile if you're driving 60 miles per hour so think of a highway so 60 miles per hour that is actually minute so i was actually thinking that it rotates 840 when you are driving for one minute then it's going to be average of if you're driving 50 or 60 600 is going to be the, your tire revolution per minute average yeah of course it can be faster if you're going 84 miles per hour but you can also calculate that and then tell me probably that'll be fun from the discussion board okay so that's it good job